Tommy Tanner his 17th goal of the season. Here's Albert Oney with 6.30 to go in the second quarter. Oney faced up against Gutierrez. Now Antonio, the Invaders desperately need to get the next goal here. They can't afford to get fall too much farther behind than this fact. They really can't afford to fall any farther behind than they are right now. Good pressure by Hessian Oney trying to pressure Carbonero, but he's finally able to get the ball back to Otto Orff. That's uh, exactly right, Keith. The, 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 the last thing, last thing in the world that the Invaders need now is for can't I mean, for uh, the Cleveland to score another goal because it, at at 12-4 it, it may be a, a large, large, large road to hoe for them. It, I mean, it's still close, still a three-goal game right now, but four game, four-goal game it may get ugly. Bradley, Oni, not a good first touch. Can't get it around Schweitzer off the board. Bradley gone in too deep. Here's Gutierrez. Todd Dasoski trying to turn on Bradley and Antonio, and they win the ball and give it back to Chris Damico with 5.25 left in the second quarter. And he'll bring it ahead himself. Damico showing some patience. The Invaders, Rich said before, the Invaders didn't want to get to a track meet, and so they're looking to slow things down a little bit. Matt Gary in front of his former teammate's bench, now Antonio. Antonio Carrera. Back to Antonio. Now get a shot away blocked by Carbonera Gutierrez to bring it forward. Henry Gutierrez stops. He's double teamed, tries to feather a pass through Matt Gary there defensively. Back to Chris Damico. Now, now Carrera. Good move around Carbonero. Whistle away from the play and a two-minute penalty called against, I believe, the Cleveland Crunch for it might be an illegal substitution call. Penalty comes at 10-19. I'm not sure what happened there. Neither did I. I just, had to I just heard my the whistle here on the... It was Mike Tamburino here on the near side away from the play blowing the whistle, and I do think it's an illegal substitution call. Then again, I could be wrong. Crunch to a five players. Uh, Gutierrez is in the penalty box. Maybe it's Gutierrez for a five-minute misconduct. And indeed, that we are told that is what it was, a misconduct penalty. Apparently, Gutierrez said something that Mike Tamburino was not happy with, went beyond the acceptable language. The magic word is where you refer to it. Well, I, I'm not sure if that's what he said or not, but either way, it puts Gutierrez out of the game for the rest of this quarter, which may help the crunch the way he's played. He's got two goals already. No shorthanded situation. Four and a half minutes left in the second. Crunch up 10 to four. Here's Schmetzer. Got the first goal of the evening, going up against Matt Gary. Gary blocks the shot. Here comes Carrera and Hesch with him in the center. Schweitzer and Carbonara back. Now Gary joining the play. Here's Gary on the far side. Schmetzer cuts him off. The pass was deflected slightly. Now, a, now look at Otto Orff. Look at Otto Orff, almost to the can yellow line. Schweitzer, saved by Damico and cleared away by Joe DiPaolo. Now Marinero. Boy, I thought Otto Orff looked like Chris Peake for a minute there as Carrera takes down. It is not a bad keeper with his feet, which, as you know, is a vital part of playing it, uh, the indoor soccer board, being able to bring the ball up and set the play up, even at the yellow line or the center line. I mean, I've seen him, I've seen him score goals like that. He's, he's a good keeper. With that. Shot header saved by Tanner, but he gets the rebound. So Tanner gets his second goal of the night, and now it's 12 to four. And this is the hole, as we just mentioned, the Invaders did not want to fall into. Falling down by four goals. The problem is with the crunch sometimes, you can't let him, because the steamroll will start. He made a good play to get his own header back. As he headed the ball in, made the said Damico made the save, but he got the rebound. But Hector Marinero, who has uh, only got the one goal tonight, it's Tanner and Gutierrez who've been doing most of the damage. Marinero gets the assist on that goal, so he's now got a goal and an assist. So the new father, Jesse Luis, was born just last week, their first child for Hector and Jody, and of course we pass along our sincere congratulations to them. Hector said Jody's doing just fine after giving birth, asked about it before the game. Last Friday, um, the, uh, Jody gave birth, and um, Hector played that night against St. Louis, I have to be standing with a buddy of mine, Brian McKenna, who's the color announcer for the um, St. Louis ambush, and I told him that this is going to be Hector play. I said, I 
Davis said, yes, you may be in trouble. <laughs> he got three of the first go four goals. I looked at it, Brian, I said, you are definitely in trouble. Quoting from Pooper, no doubt. Oh, yeah. There's the cowboy, Oscar Jagicevic. One of the better, uh, one of the biggest shots out of the back ends up there probably with guys you mentioned Chinapu and uh, Antonio for hard shots out of the back. It's amazing. You'd never think that a guy named Gusevich is a Texan, but he's, yes. he's, from, he's from Dallas. Yes, he is. That's why he's called the Cowboy. Oni's pass across the box, not in on target. Denzel fakes. Thought about the three. Hanser picks his pocket ahead looking for Marinero, who is cheating forward just a little bit up the wing. Slightly. Oh, Brian McKenna, there's a, Brian McKenna let us take over at halftime one night on KFNS 590 in St. Louis. Kind of the inmates running the asylum. <laughs> the other thing about Hector, though, I've always found, and I think a lot of players really agree with me, you don't stop Hector. You just try to stop the other you four guys. You can't stop him. You, you can, can only, only hope, hope to, to contain, contain him. him. Can you tell we watch too much Sports Center? But it's like it's like Michael Jordan. You don't, you don't stop Michael Jordan. No. He's Antonio in the corner. Hesh saved by Otto Oak with the right arm and that big hockey elbow pad that he wears. Quick throw for Marinero. Going against Swanson. I think I've only seen one keeper wear bigger elbow pads, and that's, that's Joe Papaleo, the Dallas sidekick. Yes. Called an elbow boy. <laughs> also wore the hockey style elbow pads. Bradley pulls down from behind by team and gets the pass to Swanson. You may, you may ask why he wears the pads like that. It's very simple, because on this field especially, you're playing right on top of a granite floor. And falling on granite is not fun. So We've you wear as much padding as you can. We've done it too many times. Uh, yes, I, I have several uh, souvenirs from this part of myself. Marinero and Tanner breaking free with only Powers back, and Powers gets in the way of the pass by Marinero. 2.20 to go in the second quarter. Crunch up 12 to 4. They have scored the last five goals in this game after the Invaders led 4 to 2. This is Carbonera ahead for Tanner. The last thing the invaders want to do now is fall to the defensive shell for the last two minutes. They want to keep attacking. I mean, maybe it's chip away this lead a little bit. And they've gotten away from that a little bit because the Crunch have been able to keep more. The Crunch were not even the first, like, five, first quarter, they were not able to keep as much possession as they normally do. The Crunch have been able to take, get a little more ball control, a little more good touches on it, and they've been able to keep the ball away from the invaders, and that's part of the reason why they've been able to run up the goals. I mean, I've quarter. seen a couple games this year with Scott Schweitz try to embellish that move a little bit. Just slightly. I, I've seen um, all the just all the games with the Invaders and the Crunch this year, and I don't like to say this, but it seems like the Crunch are, the, are just a bogey team. I mean, they've got the Invaders screwed. The, last, the Invaders have lost 13 straight games to the Crunch. Last win came by the Invaders over the Crunch was in March of 1994 in Cleveland. Oddly enough, that right. was the year the. The Invaders won the last two games between the two teams right here and in March of 94 in Canton, and it, uh, in Cleveland, and that was the last time. In this situation, we're bringing it up again. It's a, it's a no-lose for the Invaders. I mean, if the Invaders do lose tonight, well, they were supposed to, but if they win, it's like, hey. So they, they think, let's, like I said, let's all let it all hang out and roll the dice and see what happens. A minute 10 to go in the second quarter. Ben Powers trying to play a ball off the boards. Now gets it ahead, but it's taken away by Carbonara. Now Schmetz is the captain of the crunch. Schmetzer, blocked by Matt Gary. His two former teammates go down in a heap. Here's Carrera the other way. Joe, Joe DiPaolo's on the far side. Here's Jim Hesch, wide of the post. Hesch loves that right side, doesn't he? DiPaolo off the boards in front, and Carrera can't get to it in time. Now Powers with 45 seconds left. DiPaolo, three-pointer blocked by Schweitzer. Invaders looking for one last chance. Powers in center. Big Ben with almost 50 blocks this season. Hesch with the ball at the glass and baffled out of orb just a little bit. He had to just parry it off the glass wide. I had mentioned that Jim Hesch loved on that right side, whereas now on the left side. Shows what I know. <laughs> Powers trying to beat Dasovsky to the ball. Todd gets there first. A tangle horn. Todd Dasovsky comes away with it. Mike Benito out there with him. Benito gets around to Paolo. Kicks the side by Damico. A good sliding challenge with 12 seconds left. I was about Benito, he's a short, compact guy. He's good, he's good at stock, he's a good goal, good build for a gold score. Carrera with the right foot off the glass with three seconds, and that will do it after two quarters. We play 30 of 60 at the Civic Center. The Cleveland Crunch took control in that second quarter, five consecutive goals, and they have taken a 12-4 lead into the locker room here at halftime. Back with the second half. Right after this break, you're watching the Canton Invaders Television Network. It slices, it dices, it cuts, it chops, it grinds, it...
Manton Civic Center. That is the daughter of Crunch General Manager Al Miller here in attendance tonight. Most of the Crunch front office people usually make the trip down here to Canton tonight, being no exception. And uh, Rich Machetti, it's been, it's been, it's not been the best night for the Invaders, especially in the second quarter. First of all, we'd like to let you know that Canton Invaders soccer is brought to you by Adidas for the second straight year. Adidas is the official uniform and equipment supplier to the Canton Invaders and National Professional Soccer League. Players wear Adidas. By 1480 WHBC, your news, weather, and sports station carrying Invader updates during all Friday and Saturday games and full Sunday broadcasts, all full play-by-play -play broadcasts of all Sunday games. And by Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. And by Cameron Coca-Cola, always the Canton Invaders, always Coca-Cola. And Powerade, the official sports drink of the 1996 Olympic Games and your Canton Invaders. And by United Bank, your locally owned and independent community bank. And by Kendi, the official game ball of the National Professional Soccer League. By the Ohio Lottery, feel lucky today, then play the Ohio Lottery by Builders Square. The warehouse with everything with your, for your house, Builders Square will help get you squared away. And now that we've cleared the national debt, let's get back to soccer. <laughs> Not quite, but we're close. Just underway here in the third quarter with the crunch leading 12 to four. Here's Hector Marinero on a restart for Dragicevic. Oscar Dragicevic is shot blocked by Albert Oni. Carlos Ledesma nods it forward, but it goes right back to Denzel Antonio. Yeah, Oni's been getting a lot of time there. I mean, he's, he's showing me he can play, he can keep up in this, in this, uh, this game so far. I mean, he might be a pretty good acquisition for the Invaders. He made quite an impression on Jim Pollahan, the Harrisburg Heat coach. As we said, an open tryout. He made it out of that. Denzel Antonio blocked off the line by Tim Tima. Oh. beaten Otto Orff, and then a dangerous play foul whistled up against the Invaders. If that ball, could, if they could convert that shot, that thing just could have been a whole different ball game. That was just one of those balls that... Uh, that's all you hope it goes in because it could be a, a momentum changer for everybody involved. An early goal by the Invaders would certainly help. We're just still in the first minute here in the third quarter. Okay, shots, so stats for the uh, second quarter. Shots in the game. Cleveland had six for a game total of 18. Canton also had six for a game total of 12. Well, that stat evened up a little bit oh, in the second sure. quarter, even though the, even though the crunch scored all three goals. It's kind of weird that it happened that way. Fouls in the second quarter. Cleveland with three for a game total of six. Canton with two for a game total of three. Auto uh, saves, Otto Wharf made four for a game total of eight, and Chris Damico made three for a game total of six. That's a crunch getting a lot of shots, but again, a lot, again, are, are being blocked. Now Marinero didn't get a good touch on that ball, and Damico with the easy save. I'm pretty sure the goalies aren't complaining about the blocks, though. I mean, it's, no. it's, it's a lot less work for them. Exactly. If you, can, if you make a save, as Matt Bryans overruns the ball. If you make a save, it stops him from scoring, but if you can stop him from getting the shot away on goal in the first place, it's even better. Dragicevic with a steal as Tanner had a little hold of Carrera. Here's Hansor breaking free. Hansor tries to get around DePaulo, missed the shot wide. Tanner on the rebound, blocked by DePaulo, but the third time's the charm as Tanner completes a hat trick. A natural hat trick, too. Three that straight You don't goals. see every day. I'll tell you, I think, what set up the, I think what set that whole thing up was that Han uh, Hanser, watch, Hanser finds the hole here. He's gonna, he finds the hole bet uh, between DePaulo and, and uh, Damico. Damico fires it off the boards, and then Tanner picks up the rebound to put it home. You know, once, twice, three times, and it worked as Tommy Tanner, his 19th goal of the season, third of the night, completing a natural hat trick. It's unassisted at 151. Now the Invaders down by 10 and uh, staring up a mountain that must look like uh, Everest or Fuji or K2 or pick your pick You don't want to look at, I mean, you don't want to uh, they used to make cliches, but unfortunately, if one more goal goes by, the dam has opened. Thank uh, Talmadge United Soccer Club here tonight. Big group in attendance. They bought about 150 tickets. I'd like to thank them for showing up. 250. Thank you, Andy Smiles. Team Durham Andy's thing was 250. So I'd like to thank Talmadge United for coming out and supporting the Canton Invaders tonight. Bradley, well off the glass. Powers, double team. And Todd Dasoski with four assists in the first half comes away with it. Bradley holds it in. Bradley can't get around all the red shirts, and Schmetzer down and uh, may have caught an ankle. Looks like he tripped over, unfortunately tripped over the white line at the top of the box. Yeah, it looks like. like he may have turned an ankle a little bit trying to get that ball back to Otto Orr. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Crunch has scored six straight goals, the last three by Tommy Tanner oh, for that, a natural hat-trick. That was a hat beautiful trick. back pass by Dasoski. Shane Goodwin step behind Gutierrez. 
I said Tommy Tanner has the natural hat trick in this game. I think he scored the last three goals. Schweitzer, redirection just wide by Todd Dostoevsky. He was in the right place, just pushed it wide as Damico dove for his right post. Like I said, his first year, Dostoevsky's coming up with an incredible nose for the goal. Like that right there. Turn and burn. You called that one. Chris Damico didn't have time to react. It's now 16 to four, Cleveland. Right on that one, but looks like I hit the... Here comes the replay. 259, time of the goal. He got the, he got the feed and he just put it right, right down to the short corner of Damico. And now Scott, Andy Schmetzer gets the assist on that goal. 16 to four, Cleveland leading. And he, as you said, the dam is broken. The juggernaut has decided to roll on. It seemed like this happened before. The invaders made a game of it early, but it's like the crunch just flipped the switch. And turned up, and turned up the heat. Well, the crunch can change a game when they want. They say, "Okay, we'll take it enough. Let's go ram it down their throat." We're talking to Zosky, his 16th goal of the season, going four assists. He now has six points on the night. Schmetzer now with a goal and assist as well. Here he is again. Oh my! It's a crossbar. Oh. No, they're saying it's a goal. Oh, oh, oh! It's well, the back I want to watch that again. I want to watch that again. Well, we've got it at real time. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I'm not sure. I thought that, that hit the crossbar. Just, I think that looked like it hit the crossbar to me too. Okay, here comes Schweitzer. He bends one in. It's picked, and it's picked up by Gutierrez. Looks like Gutierrez back to Carbonara. Carbonara sends it over to. What? Here it comes. Now that was the first That's goal. That's the first goal. I'm that sorry. Todd scored. Either way, it's not eight. Either way, it's 18 to four now, and the points just keep piling up for the Cleveland Crunch. Todd Dasowski's 17th goal and second in the space of about 45 seconds. The so has eight points. A big night for the youngster from Anoka, Minnesota. And Schmidt, uh, Schweitzer will get the assist on that one at 3:25, so 26 seconds apart for those two goals. The crunch can be kind of like, as I read the book once, riding Space Mountain with a case of nitroglycerin up It's not if, but when. Wasn't that said about working with Dick Vitale? I think that's, too? yeah, that's right. Bob Lee said about working with Dick Vitale at ESPN. My Very role model due to his hairline and his style. And you both come by the Eastern accent. Oh, yeah. Me too. Chris Hansor nearly created a great chance for himself on a pass or a flick on from Hector Marinero. And Chris Damico having a rough night of it. But then again, a lot of goalkeepers facing the crunch have had a rough night of it. Here's Jimmy Hesch getting free. Three pointers saved by Jim Adams, who has now come on in place of Otto Orpha as Bruce Miller looks to give Orpha a little bit of rest. But Orpha last month during January was plagued with some back problems and Adams had to come in for a few games and relieve him. Adams uh, is, is not really uh, known as an out indoor goalie. Outdoors, he played with the Columbus Zogs over the summer. Where the Zogs finished 17 and three in the USISL. And he was named to the USISL All-Star team was the, as well. He was the goalie of the year in the USISL. When the USISL All-Stars played Shamrock Rovers, a very well-known club in Ireland. In, I believe it was on one, uh, they played in Columbus. That's uh, right. The first week in August last year. Of course, we couldn't go because we were busy at the United Soccer Boosters Convention. Oh, yeah. Ledesma, Carrera, three-pointer saved by Adams, diving down low. And speaking of wild goalkeeper shirt designs, check out another one. I was one just going to bring Adams. that up. It's, it's interesting, to say the least. Hesch breaking free. Hesch can't get around team Andrzejewicz, but he got fouled, says Walter Jones. I think I shouldn't make too much comments about flamboyant uniforms as I wear, I wear bumblebee socks when I play soccer. <laughs> he does, and I, he, uh, you have to have serious um, nerve nerve Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, the, we had a, we had a certain term in my we had another term it's, it's not good for family tv no we had way. a term in spanish but we're not going to use it here maybe if ledesma's watching you'll get the idea or carrera who's good going point. to take this restart the maestro without a point tonight DePaulo into the twilight zone DePaulo, watertown connecticut got him a big cheer when he was introduced to the crowd in New Haven last night and the reason, was me. I, the reason he got introduced that way to the crowd in New Haven was because I was the one doing the introduction. And I'll be the first to tell you as well. Because <laughs> I had to be put to use as the uh, PA announcer Friday night in New Haven as the Invaders lost to Chicago 16-7. to That's what I love about working indoor soccer. You're basically a, a jack of all trades. I mean, just myself, in this season, I've been a team media relations director, PA announcer, color commentator, game show host, 
Uh, we've both done the game we made, show. We've both done the game show here. bit. Um, that, DJ. Does, that, does, that make, uh, does that make Robin and Colleen uh, Carol Merrill? <laughs> uh, let's hope so, gentlemen. But uh, like I said, you do, especially in a sized operation in Vegas, we have to kind of be the jack of all trades. Exactly. I mean, you, to learn, you learn. You live and learn this way. Big tangle in the Invaders' end, but the Invaders come away with it. Here's Carrera from Bradley feeding DiPaolo. DiPaolo blocked by Hector Marinero getting back in his own end. What about Marinero, though? He's not a strictly offensive player. He plays both ways. DiPaolo a little impatient. That puts it just over the top. He had a little more time than I think he yeah, realized. Yeah, he wedged it a little bit, too. If he could have got more of a solid hit on it, that might have been trouble. Well, he was trying to hit the full volley. He right. might have hit it quickly. If he'd have settled it down, he might have had a chance to get a better, better shot on goal. Damn go up and throwing ahead for Carrera. 8.40 to go in the third quarter. Crunch up 18 to four. They have scored seven straight goals. Gutierrez is missing over the top. He has two of them so far tonight. Gutierrez is another oh, alumni yeah. of the USISL over the summer. He played with the Myrtle Beach Boys. I love that name. That's a great name. And they, had, they saw BOYZ, so they avoid any kind of trademark or copyright infringement. The Beach Boys went all the way to the Premier League, which is the top level of the USISL. All the way with the the division finals where they where they lost to the Minnesota Thunder. One of the best teams in the USISL over the last couple of years. I think they could give a couple of the A-League teams some, some trouble. They might be able to. I'm not saying because an old buddy of mine is one of the part owners and general manager. <laughs> Schweitzer ball ahead looking for Todd Dasowski but too far and Damico able to scoop it up easily with 8-10 left in the third. I mean the USISL is a great league. I mean they got, they're putting teams it's like minor league baseball away with every in the 30s every town with a railroad track and a stoplight had a minor league baseball team. The USISL has got 100 teams in different places, like Reno and, uh, and a Sioux City, Iowa. And a women's league to go and with And a it. women's league, and women's soccer is booming right off. So I think the USISL, I've said before, is the wave of the future. First, the women, U.S. women's national team, regarded as one of the favorites for the gold medal in this summer's Olympics. They but were the 1991 world champions and 1995 third place team in the World Cup in Sweden last summer. My parents, now uh, now there was a team, the Coco Beach Expo is in the USISL, even harassed me to come down there because I look, my parents live about 20 minutes from Coco Beach. That's where you find chocolate fish, you know. Right. But I'm bummed. <laughs> Ball looking for leave Albert Oney. Keith, leave the jokes to me. <laughs> I'm not going to touch the line. <laughs> I refuse. I know better. Oh, Lordy. Here come the Crunch once again, leading 18 to 4 with 7.10 to go in the third quarter, and yes, they have been bad to the bone. And here's Christian oh, oh, by Damico. Oh, oh he, he, he just tried to flick that ball past you. He didn't I don't think, think it was unbelievable. I don't think Albert Oney knew where that ball was. He was looking all oh, no. over trying to find I think it, he was and looking he never did. the ground, and, and, it, and Gutierrez got a little bit of air on it and just flicked it past, tried to flick it past him. Lovely service oh, by Marinero, too. Carrera shot blocked. Dewan Bader taking his first shift. Yeah, first shift of the night. Darth as the ebullient to Mark Munch Bishop, the regular play-by-play -play announcer of the Cleveland Crunch calls him. He's not here tonight. He's down in Florida. How Lucky he got him. that? How he got that cushy gig? I don't know. He's in Florida. And Adam Mendoza down here to our left, calling the game for Cleveland. Munch's a character. I mean, I, I've sat behind him several times, and the funny story about um, working with sitting behind Munch. The last time Canton was in Cleveland was um, about, about, four, about four weeks ago. And I'm sitting right directly behind him, and the invaders got, shall we say, hosed on a call. And I used uh, certain expletives, and I said, "Oh, I hope Munch didn't hear that." But unfortunately, Munch was bellowing into the mouth with his famous "Oh my" call yeah. loudly, so I think I, I figured I was okay. <laughs> Not to be confused with Dick Enberg's "Oh my" call. I've always said way. about me, me, God gave me very few good gifts, but a good pair of lungs is one of them. <laughs> Far post, Tim Tima denied by Damico. <laughs> Keith can vouch for that one. Trust me. <laughs> Very much so. A great save by Damico. Another terrific pass from Hector Marinero finds Tima overlapping to the far post. Well, most referees also know my lung power at this yes. point in life. Here's Tanner. Gonna play a ball of balls soon. Off the boards himself. Matt Bryan's read it well. Can't clear the zone. Hands are Damico out there to clear it away. That's one thing you gotta learn when you when you first go from outdoors to indoors is learning that you can use the walls as your buddy. Being able to come up with the, the one-time pass off the wall to yourself. That's I've seen guys who were great outdoor players who couldn't convert because they didn't realize that you could use the walls and the glasses to your advantage. Kai Hoskovy for the great force and crunch player out of Finland as Bradley miss hits a three-point attempt. And there's Carrera with some space. Off the boards, team, I got a head on it. Nobody, the <laughs> Nobody there for the invaders. But Hoskovy, who had played 
a lot of hockey in Finland. Some say he could have played in the NHL if he wanted to. In fact, he had a brother-in-law who did. Matty Hagman played for Edmonton in Quebec. Oh, look at this. Showtime. Nope. Oh. Ansor missed up the far post of the setup from him, Aaron Arrow and Bader. But Hoskin is the, for really the first to realize how to use the boards to his advantage as an extra player. And it caught on quickly as the ball off the boards from the wing is now the standard play in indoor soccer attacking. First chip tonight for Wes Steven Seagal Seacrest out there from Lakewood, Ohio. Yes, he replaces Tim Whitman with that Steven Seagal tied back hair. Tim Whitman who's out of soccer this summer. Without me shooting this season. I'd like to see Steven Seagal do a uh, soccer version of Sudden Death. Well, we can do it here. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very good. He wouldn't have to climb as high on the roof like he did at the Civic Arena, though. Good point. Seacrest, long shot wide of the post. Damago diving, but it was a couple feet wide. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. He's Rich Pachetti. I'm Keith Kokinda. The Crunch leading the Invaders 18-4. to four. They scored the last eight goals in this game, not seven, as I said before. I don't like to really say it's much, but Brian sort of embellished that move a little bit. You can always tell if a guy is really... I've always found you can always tell again if a guy's faking an injury, he rolls down a few times. If you're really hurt, the last thing you yeah. do is roll. The Brazilians are notorious for that. Swanson moving forward into the corner. Nobody there is wide, is wide of both Hesh and Antonio. Todd Dasaski ahead looking for Mike Benito. Swanson steals it. Here's Albert Oni. Oni. Now Swanson with three and a half to go in the third. Looking for Carrera. Watched by Dragicevic. Now Albertoni again. Swanson for Hesh. Taken off the ball by Tima, not Todd DeSaski. Trying to bring it forward. Nothing doing, says Swanson and Hesh. Not Tima in there tangling as well. And the invaders come away with it. Oni against Dragicevic. Thought about a three. Now trying to move in. Hesh with him. Hesh needs to get out of the way. Now Swanson. Hesh posting up, lead for Swanson, held up by Dasaski. Literally draped all over. And then the block by Schmetzer on the right-footed shot by Ledesma. I don't see him do that too often. He prefers that left foot, of course. I'm looking at the size of this arena, though. I'm looking right over the ledge of the press box, and I see Otto, who is taking the rest of the night off, talking to some fans, and I also see Henry Gutierrez in the stands. <laughs> well, there's not much room on the bench oh, no, here, either. I mean, Bruce Miller sitting, standing on a chair behind the bench. The benches are all invented in. by Gary Hindley, by the way. He started that. The benches are all, I think, in Cleveland. I mean, here in Canton are maybe each one, maybe 15 foot long, 12 foot long. You really don't have a lot of room for people. Here's Swanson on the restart. Antonio wide off the shot, just inside the three-point line, and the Crunch will bring it out of their own end. 2:40 to go in the third. Crunch lead 18 to four. Long ball ahead to Sosky and Benito not in the right place. And here comes Denzel Antonio. Ledesma. Just shows the confidence of um, Bruce Miller and his younger players when he's got when he's got uh, Mike Veneto and um, Todd Sosky on as as two of the lead players on this on this unit with. Um, Degusevic, Kevin Carbonaro, and Andy Schmetz. Well, early on, as we said before, they had the injury problems. They had to give them some playing time, and they were able to get the experience, and that gives it. And now Miller knows they can play, and he's able to put them out there. That's a big change from last year when Gary Hilling was coaching. Because Gary, I mean, admittedly, he will tell you, play favorites. Hector and Zorn were out there whenever, whenever he wanted them out there, whenever they wanted to be out there. Now that's uh, what Ken Dryden always said about. Uh, Scotty Bowman, too. In fact, I've, always, I've said Gary Hindley is like Scott Bowman, the Detroit Red Wings coach, in a lot of ways. He will play favorites. He he, you know, he tends to, you know, he tries to get what he can out of the younger players by messing with them a little bit. Oh, oh that was Mike Veneto. Mike Veneto. That was beautiful. Talk about the younger players. That was Mike Veneto from West Seacrest. Veneto was just was hanging at the far post, waiting for the shot. West dumped it in, and it was showtime here. So Veneto and Seacrest on the counter attack. Here it is again. The long, the long pass from Jim Adams. Here comes, and that was beautiful. That was Charged into the goal and tapped it in. Chris Damick. Oops. 13-18, the time of that goal. Benito from Seacrest to make it 20-4 in favor of the crunch for Benito. It's his fifth goal of the season. And we're underway once again, down to a minute 40 to go here in the third quarter. DePaulo, long ball ahead for Brian. Brian and Seacrest battling for the ball in the corner. Whistle and they call the foul on Bryant. Jim Adams to Dewan Bader. 
Bader. In fact, they got a one of those North Carolina State players. In fact, they have a Wolfpack T-shirt with, yeah. with the four Crunch players from North Carolina State on it. Hey, Matty Bryan's has shown me something this season. I, I saw him play um, with the Chattanooga Express, another USISL club, in 93 in the league finals, and I really didn't notice him, but he showed me that he's a sticky little player. He won't take any crap off anybody, and he's a, he's a good player. I mean, I think if he can hook up with somebody, the Invaders, not them, somebody else, Matty oh, Bryan's great, a shot there. Great save by Jim he'll Anson. Be he'll be, good, he'll be a good role, role player in this league. You need a few players with that sure. hard-nosed attitude. Right. Yeah, and you need got, uh, Matt, and Matty Bryant is, 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 this is a hard. Player. This is a hard-nosed game. He's not afraid to say, "Look, I'll, I, I'm not going to be a big scorer, but I'll, I'll be willing to play on the second line and be a, a, a trouble player. starter." Yeah. I was thinking of another word, but as they uh, say in hockey, a shift disturber. Right. For for. <laughs> and I enunciate <laughs> that properly for reasons. <laughs> Thank you. I, that that's the term I was thinking of, but I'm glad I didn't use it. <laughs> Well, now Damico doing some gambling, and it's going to cost Oh, that, that is him. Church. Marinero, a three-point goal. And but the band plays on. Okay. I do believe that is three points. I think that's what Mike Tamburino signaled. We shall see but Here in comes. A here comes Hanser. He brings it over to Marinero now. Here com now, here comes Damico to challenge. He dribbles once around Marinero. Cardinal picks it up. And then Marinari just flicks it in, nobody around him, and it was, that's a three. And it was a three-point goal coming at 14-42. And as you said, now that they're saying it's only a two-point. Nope, it is a three-point goal. They put two up on the scoreboard, but it is a three. So Marinero's second goal of the night makes it 23-4 Cleveland. Now they're telling us it's They took two the three points. Point. Now it's now a two. I'm okay. sorry about that. No. Oh, read direction by Benito right on Damico as the buzzer sounds. We played 45 out of 60 here at the Civic Center. The Crunch have blown this one wide open. They lead by a score 22 to 4. Back with the fourth quarter after this on the Invaders Television Network. <laughs> Ignore that feeling. Get a Super Lotto ticket. You never know. Today could be your lucky day. I think I'll flip a coin. I'm a winner either way. Mm, I feel lucky today. at the Canton Civic Center. He's Rich Pichetti. I'm Keith Kokinda. They've now corrected it again. It is a three-point goal, so that 23-4 score, 23 four score you saw was correct. The crunch all over the Canton Invaders. They've scored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Too many. Ten straight goals. Too many. Marinero's goal from Carbonara, 14-42. Had his 52nd goal of the season. Compared to the last couple of years, that's almost an off-season for him. But then again, well, he, he was injured that, early in the season. Yes. But Hector, the last two years, had a whole over 100. Yeah, keep in mind, that 52 goals is in only 19 games played. And that doesn't count. That's games he's actually played in some of those games. He did not play a regular shift for the entire game. And so 52 goals. In 19 games, that's almost three a game. Hector's an amazing, is, you can't deny he's an amazing player. There's nothing, there's nothing else you can say about it. I mean, yeah. like I said, you, I mean, you can't stop him. You just stop the other four guys around him, hope the damage, you take the damage. Let's take a look at that three-pointer again, if we can. I'm not, they changed it back and forth a couple of times. It's, let's see, damn right here. Here's where Damico's problem is, that touch right, right. there was what lost the decade Carbonero. That was, that was definitely, definitely a three. That line. was definitely That a is a three-point goal. That was definitely a three-point goal for Hector Marinero. Shots are still pretty close. We're still pretty close. That third quarter, 9-7 in favor of Cleveland. The Orph 
uh, came out early in the third quarter, did not make any saves during his time. Jim Adams got three. Otto Moore finished with only eight saves in his half of work. Damico is up to 11 saves now. He made three, excuse me, in that third quarter. He was under a lot of fire, though, in that third quarter. Oh, sure. Well, Damico's still in there, though. Jim Adams in for Cleveland. I'll, I'll tell you, I've seen goalies who face the crunch. They've got that look of a man just facing a firing squad. The shots, they keep coming. <laughs> I, think, I think Damico has a little bit of an idea how Gary Gilmore felt back in 1979. It's like the, it's like the guy with the, uh, on the um, credit card commercial one said, what do you do, what, what do, do you, you do? do? Can you know we know each other's lines? Can you tell we know each other's lines pretty well? Albertoni in deep, can't get the ball free. Tries to set up Ledesma. Venito got a foot in there to help break that up. The Invaders able to keep possession back at center. Doug Swanson. Just underway in the fourth quarter. Crunch all over the Invaders with 10 straight goals, leading 23 to 4. I think it's a situation now where Denzel's told the guys, look, let's keep the damage, damage control down. Because they, unfortunately, let's face it, they can be a doomsday, but the game is done. Now, barring a small miracle of eight or nine goals. I think it's, let's that would keep be the a, damage control down. That would be a large miracle. Okay, Not large miracle. <laughs> Team ahead for Todd Dostoevsky. Ledesma steps in his way and wins the ball. I'm not a big fan of the Village people, but I'll tell you one thing is that song gets everybody going crazy, no matter what building I go to. And it's in played in every building. It, it's, it's becoming one of those I don't songs. think I've gone to an indoor soccer game in the last two years where I haven't heard, well, maybe one. I think it was one. Dewan Bader breaking free. Bader in alone on Damico. Scores. Not much Chris Damico could do there. He's breaking in alone. He came out, tried to cut down the angle a little bit, but he had no help. And the beat goes on, ladies and gentlemen. The beat goes on. And they love this. Okay, here we go. Bader basically takes it in for himself from the halfway line, and he shoots it to the strong, right to the, to the strong side of um, Damico, and there's nothing he can do. Uh, the Crunch fans have given up the whoop. There it is, Chan. They used over the last few goals. Now they're chanting 30. And the way it's going, they just might get it. Bader unassisted, uh, Bader unassisted at 107 of the fourth quarter to make it 25 to four. I was saying about talking about the music they played games. I mean, uh, well, Keith and I, when we first took got these positions that we have now, we said, let's we want to play a lot of. What would this be a rock and roll and fun place? And I think we've gotten that so far. We've gotten a lot of positive, positive feedback about the music we play here. Uh, we've been to, Keith and I've been to plenty of games in different places, and we've said, okay, what works and what doesn't. We picked out songs we like and we obviously like, and said, let's, let's have some fun with this. Yeah. I mean, the, one of the funniest ones was Wichita, where they have a notoriously, I would say, I should say notoriously, but an older crowd, as opposed to having a lot of kids at the game, listening, watching everybody up and dancing to the old Beastie Boys song, you, gotta, you have to fight for your right to party. It was just interesting watching all these people, 30, 40, 50 years old, up and dancing to that song. Just Something something just didn't quite yeah, jive. Yeah, it didn't quite add up there. And as far as Gaines' attendance is concerned, there are very, as you said, it says in the media guide, few people have attended more in their soccer games than the man to my right, Rich Buschetti. And um, the only city I haven't been to in the league so far is Wichita, I mean, excuse me, in Kansas City. I'll be in Wichita again next week. After this actually be one thing right there after this game is shown on Friday for the All-Star Game weekend. And it's, I have sort of the Wichita situation right now because they're right now, they're in the middle of a drive to keep the wings in town. Again. Again, for the seventh time in 17 years history of the team. Big save by Chris Damico and John Ball out there taking his first shift. 22-year-old defender. On December 1st, uh, Roy Turner, the president and GM of the Wings, told, they had a press conference that said that we have to sell 800 of what they're calling backpacks and back the Wings, which are basically ticket coupon books for the remainder of the season, and $100,000 with a corporate sponsorship to keep the franchise in town. And from what I understand, they haven't been doing that well ticket sales-wise. And I, I mean, I hope and pray for my friends which Wichita that they do keep the Wings in town because Wings fans are first rate, I love them all. I mean, I've been to Wichita several times. They've treated me like I, I was king. And I hope for the sake of, Wichita's a good soccer market. It's proved that over the years. And I'm hoping that they, something could be pulled out of the hat. And of course, the, the Wings are the oldest continuously operated soccer franchise in North America. This is their 17th season, starting in the MISL, where they made a lot of headlines by being able to succeed and compete against the bigger markets. Well, as I like to say that um, a lot of soccer franchises have the uh, lifespan of the average monarch butterfly, 
Um, Wichita's been out for 17 years. I remember when I first heard that Wichita got a team, I'm like, Wichita, huh? But they, they, I mean, when places like LA several times, New York several times, Chicago, Dallas, places like that have had and lost franchise, little Wichita with 285,000 people in town managed to survive and thrive, that says something to me. Diving save off the three-pointer by Dragicevic from Chris Damico. He's well, still key. He's still playing hard, trying to keep out as many goals as he can. Well, well, Wichita, I've met a lot of classy people through that organization. My, my good friend Dave Phillips, their former radio announcer, uh, Roy Turner, Kim Rentbeck, guys who've been around for so many years. Roy, Dave Phillips, by the way, in terms of mental uh, age, the youngest man ever to do commentary and work in this league. He is the age of about a twelve the maturity of about a twelve year old. One of my one of my favorite psychos <laughs> in the world. I love the guy at Den. I mean one, one of the all-time great guys you'll ever want to meet is Dave Phillips. And uh, actually he's like his late thirties I believe. Yeah he's, he like, he's, he's, he's got a he's got that baby face. He would quit the wings a couple years ago to go work at the local Greyhound track there. Greyhound racing very popular in Kansas of course we couldn't resist telling them that we always knew your career was going to go to the dogs one of these days. Sure. <laughs> But uh, I mean, like I said, I, 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 some of my fondest moments as a soccer fan, traveler, what have you, have been in Wichita with those people. I mean, I've been at games that have had 9,600 people there, and it is crazy. It's just craziness. And the Wings finally getting a chance to host the MPSL All-Star Game. That's Sunday, February 11th. That will you can catch the same-day tape of that at midnight on Sunday on ESPN. Here's Troy DeSat Todd DeSatsky in the corner. Albert Oni works it free, but Mike Benito holds it in for the crunch. Now poke back to center for Seacrest. 10-20 to go in the fourth quarter. It's been all Cleveland crunch since midway through the first. They lead 25 to four. They've scored the last 11 goals. I'll tell you, I guess it being a traveler like I have, I've managed to sample a lot of different foods around this league. I think that's two Your my waistline shows two of my too. favorite snack foods in the world are the, are the bags of donuts they sell here at the Civic Center and the the wonderful funnel cakes that they serve at the Harrisburg Farm, at the Pennsylvania Farm Show here in Harrisburg. Um, Damico in all kinds of trouble has to give a three-line violation, but at that point, being caught that far out, that's not a bad option to take. Right. But yeah, your waistline shows it. Oh yeah, I mean, between that and the frosty cold ones, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> soft drinks, soft drinks. <laughs> Adult beverages. Right, thank you, thank like you, Mr. Cocaine. Um, Here's Tima. Trying to find Todd Dasoski, and then Tima puts it up into the rafters, almost. Stays in play, though. You'll note that the, the glass here at the Kansas Center is lower than most arenas in the league. Uh, you're going to see a lot more balls that'll fly out, which may, like, for example, on Cleveland, where the, where the glass is maybe a foot and a half taller. Couldn't quite get it out to uh, Daniel Gill, and the crunch bring it back the other way again. Hansar. Hasn't had a point tonight after having some big nights in the first couple games. Off the face of the oh, goal. Oh, West Saved by Chris Damico as West Secrets was alone on the back post. But Damico is playing hard to the end, isn't he? Oh, sure. I mean, you, you can't... To me, it's a psychological thing. If you let down in a game like this, your team's going to let down in the, and, and the floodgates will open. But if Damico's saying, look, I'm not going to give him anything anymore... He's a competitor. Oh, sure. He's no question. As a goalie, you have... To it's a, it's a psychological thing. If, if you're down, the team is down. Ledesma. It's, we've had that problem with our amateur teams. I mean, the team would score, a goal on, would score a goal against us. We'd say, come on back. That's all you got. Let's have some more. We've been doing that a lot, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's the problem. We lost again last uh, Friday night by a score of 9-2. Ouch. Pesh taken down by Tima. 8.38 to go in the fourth quarter. It's been all Cleveland Crunch, 25 to four, they lead. I just found out yesterday that uh, one of our favorite indoor soccer um, landmarks, the famous clear plastic dasher boards in, from the Dayton Civic Center over the last few years, we call it the fishbowl, is now in a indoor soccer facility. Another one in Warrensville Heights up by where we live. Oh boy, there's a second one up it's there a place now? Called, place called Soccer Start. Now, I've not been there. You haven't but, heard of it. No, it's just new, new speed, but the I should explain to you that the... Uh, Just wide of the far post from Ledesma on the three-point shot. Instead of having the glass and then the wood boards, the, the in Dayton last year, when they played the Dayton Convention Center, was plexiglass all the way through, so you could see... That's where you see the white boards with all the ads on. Right. That's all plexiglass as well with ads 
bolted to them from right. behind. That are clear so you can see, literally see through the edge of the action. And the rebounds are ridiculous. They come out that, so far. It was a crazy place, but I think you and I both were there. We loved it. It was a crazy, a crazy place to watch soccer. The rebounds came off much harder and much faster and much farther than in any other arena and made for some crazy play. The way And Dayton Dynamo really tried to take advantage of it, trying to create all kinds of chaos in front of the opposing goal. I'll tell you, some of the, I know about Dayton, who, uh, I, love, I love their fans. They, yeah. were, they were crazy people, and I love them. I, and they I, still are. Yeah, we, I was, um, the, Crunch played, the Crunch played Cincinnati last night in, in Cleveland, and they brought some of their fans up with them. There were some guys, um, actually, I've the Silverbacks, they met for the Cincinnati Gorilla that they're famous in dream down there. That shirt's the, the primate pit, and they're wearing gorilla masks. Yes, they're wearing I love it. They have it at the Cincinnati Guards, too. They got the one corner, the, the one end, as here's Ball getting him behind everybody. And oh, my. Directed it. Then Damico takes him down, and Damico's well, going off for two. Damico will get the tripping call. It should be a penalty kick since it was in the box. That comes at 7.59. So a penalty kick upcoming for the Cleveland Crunch. This will be a two-point penalty kick if they convert this. But as opposed to miss, a one-point shootout. But if they miss, they go to a penalty, uh, power play, which is only worth one point. So that'll mean Drew Burwash will have to come on. Be his first action in a couple weeks. So the rookie from Lindsey Wilson College getting his stretching done in front of the Invader bench to see Chris Damico, a terrific game despite the 25 points. I'll tell you though, Drew Burwash, I've seen, like I said, I've seen all the Invaders games this year. He has impressed me. He's, I know he's a tough, hard-nosed guy. I like watching him play. He's enthusiastic out there. He won't take any garbage off anybody. And he's got, I mean, He's a real spark plug. I, I think another he's got another guy's got a future this year. I think you hear the fans reacting because I think they realize he's a he's an exciting player to watch. I think he will be a good goalie in a, in a year or two. His immediate future. His immediate future is a penalty kick. John Ball, who was the one t player taken down by Damico, will take it. Now, if he misses, the crunch go on a power play, which is why all the players are around the box. It's not like a free throw in basketball. Yes, the pressure is on the player taking the kick. He is expected to make this. The goalkeeper's under no pressure. If, He's not expected to make If ball converts, this will be his first career into a pro point. I believe, I believe this is his first game, actually. Is it it's his first game with the crunch? And here we come, John Ball. So, he Mr. White, and Jugisovic puts it over the top of the Invaders are already ahead. And the most they can get is the can, can concede is the one point power play. I'll tell you, Drew Burwash dodged the bullet on that one, literally. He missed it wide. But John Ball, he was the number two draft pick for, uh, by the Crunch in the college game out of Southern Connecticut State. Now another two minute penalty has been called against the Invaders again. Chris Damico is over in the penalty box very uh, upset I talk, talk, talking to Mike Tamburino. Yeah, Tamburino and this is one that Jones is signaling five, meaning a five minute misconduct. This is the last thing in the world that they want now. And it's Denzel Antonio, Antonio who got the five minute misconduct at 8.05. You're right though, Rich, but they didn't, this is not what they wanted. Let's say John Ball of Southern Connecticut State was an All-American at SCSU. And they won two NCAA championships during his tenure. And then, we didn't see that, but they were warming up Drew Burwash, Doug Swanson, as they put the ball down at the top of the arc, and Tommy Tanner kicked it right past him into the goal. And the Invader fans not too upset with that. SCSU is, this, is a soccer power. They had two brothers, John and Pedro DeBrito, who, if you followed in their soccer at the time, Pedro was a pretty fair player with Dallas sidekicks. He was on their 86-87 well. Never Say Die championship team. That was a magic year for the sidekicks, and they were, I mean, I could tell you several hours with the stories about that franchise, that, that year. There's Marinero. Set up Tanner, can't get it on goal, and the Invaders able to clear. The Crunch are on the power play. Bryans and Paven Mosovac getting his first action. Swanson and Bradley out there in the penalty killing unit. I'm surprised I didn't see a side by it saying Pavot's place. Tanner, Gutierrez, Dragicevic, Marinero, and Schmitz are out uh -oh. there on the man advantage. And we have something else going on now. Mark Del Coral, third official calling over Walter Jones. And they discuss what's third. going on here. 6.50 to go in the fourth quarter, a minute 49 left. I think they decided the we're having advantage. dinner tonight. We're going to go. <laughs> Tanner, Marinero, wide. 
Dragicevic to settle it down. Crunch with a man advantage and a 21-point lead. I think the crunch right now will be set will be basically going through the proverbial four-corner start. I don't think they want to inflame no, the they invaders, don't. Even though invaders is, players to doing even something rash. Because they don't want any of their own players right. hurt. And Bruce Miller, to his to his credit and his, uh, sh showing his class, he has done this before in big games where the crunch have had big leads on the invaders. He called the dogs. Season. He has called off the dogs, told them to back off and not run up the score. And that, again, a classy move on his part, and I'm sure he'll do it again. Just again, showing his class and also preserving his own team because he doesn't want any of his, other, any of his players hurt in the event of any nasty play. 2,873 in attendance tonight. Next game for the Invaders at home Friday, February 23rd, 7.30 against the Baltimore Spirit. That was the largest crowd of the year tonight. It's 2873. Yes. Hopefully it's, it's been a lively them. crowd, too. I mean, yes. when the Invaders have given them something to cheer about, they've been pretty into it. Her wash denies Tanner. Hopefully a lot of them will be back in spite of the score. Hopefully they'll realize, hey, this is the best team in the league. And this is going to happen. Jagicevic, a long attempt saved by Burr. Washed on the 35 seconds left in the man advantage. It's one of those things. I mean, let's face it. I mean, the Crunch have done this to, be to other teams that have better records than the Invaders. Yes, exactly. Ball well, bounces out of play on the throw by Burr. Wash. She was a little bit disgusted with that. And they'll bring it all the way back to the top of the Canton penalty arc with 5.26 to go in the fourth quarter. I mean, I, I, tell, I like Drew Burrush a lot. I mean, yeah. I think he's a real good keeper. I mean, he's not, again, he's not big. He's only 5'10 or so, but he's acrobatic. And he, I mean, he's, I mean, he literally was pushing Gutierrez out of the way, which yeah. means he's not going to take also any garbage. He plays aggressively. He comes out quickly and challenges players uh, very quickly, which oh, is something oh, a goal, oh. some goalkeepers have a, a tough time doing. But he makes the challenge, makes it quick. He's got very quick feet. Right. It's, it's, it's a psychological thing also for goalie. The goalie's got to sit there and say, okay, this box, 24 by 24, that's my territory. Come and in your own well. The one thing he, the one, and even his throwing is quite good. You've seen some guys, P.J. Johnson particularly was here at tonight's game. He had some trouble his first year or two sure. learning about throwing the ball downfield. The one problem Burwash has is using his feet with the ball at his feet. But that's learnable. That, that's, not a, that's not a deadly sin. You can learn that. Gutierrez just wide after Gisevich missed on the short side. Penalty is expired to Chris Damico, so the Invaders back at full strength with 4.45 to go in the game. Marinero. As the Crunch are slowing it down, they'll be content to just play out the last four and a half minutes here. And again, to the credit of Bruce Miller, not running up the score. I mean, it's, it's getting, I mean, how do you motivate a team but tomorrow, they play, uh, the Invaders will play tomorrow, Sunday. I keep forgetting this game's going to be shown on, on a four-day delay. They play the Wichita Wings tomorrow, who are an equally tough team. I mean, if you're Denzel, how do you motivate the team to sit there and say, okay, look, let's put this behind us and start over? Well, oh, a blowout like this is easy. You play in the crunch, it's easy to say, hey, they're the best team. They proved it. Forget the story, it. Let's move on. It's, 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 I think this, it's easier to forget a game like this than it is Friday night's game against Chicago. Because that was a game I think a lot of players, if you would ask them for a game, felt, yes, we think we should right. be able, we should have a chance to win this. I mean, Tonight's game, you realize, hey, they're a great team. You lose, you take it, you go with. on. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a difficult. I mean, the Invaders have been to the highs and the lows. They've been games like this this year, but they've also been games where they played uh, like Kansas City here about a month and a half ago, 23-22. They lost the game, but they can sit there and say, "Okay, we gave this team a team that's and the best in the league." And let's not forget win number 300 right. in Harrisburg uh, back on December 16th. Right. What I'm saying is that, okay, we said, "Look, we gave a team all we want. Hey, look, we can do this. We can win this in this league." Unfortunately, the breaks just haven't gone the Invaders' no, I mean, way. It's like I said earlier this earlier tonight. Oh, an own goal, a three-point own goal by uh, no, I think that, I think that I think that went off of uh, Veneto, I think. I'm not sure. We may have to take... We'll see what the referees say about this. I haven't seen a signal one way or the other. And okay, let's take a look at it again. Okay. Here comes Tima. Here's the Looks shot over from Seekers. I don't know, I couldn't tell. I, I haven't seen it put up yet, so they I haven't I, put a score up. I okay, wait, it did go off Hesh. You know, it was on it the did hit Hesh. Clearly, Hesh was the last player to touch it. The question is, did it hit They've only Benito put up two first. points, so I don't know. And we'll, show, we'll, we'll try it, it one more time. They put up only two points on the scoreboard, so it looks like they say that Benito did hit it. We'll look at it again. Uh, tell. I couldn't, you can't tell from that angle if it was down low, it might be Well, injured. they're saying now it's Seacrest from Tima, so he didn't touch it, but Seacrest was beyond the three-point line at this point in time. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's at 11.28. 
and Tim Tima getting the assist, and now it's 27 to four. We're down to 3:15. That's the longest game. straight between um, between goals the Crunch have had this day, almost 10 minutes. Yeah, but it's still that's 12 straight now that they've right. scored. That's got to be a record somewhere. <laughs> it's got to be. Including the natural hat trick by Tanner. Two goals from Gutierrez. Todd Zasowski, a goal and four assists. And the beat goes on for the Cleveland Crunch. Now racing their record to 25 and two. They are threatening the Canton Invaders 36 and four all time mark. Bob Bishop, the former radio voice PR director and chief of the bottle washer of the Invaders many years ago, told us a story about that 36 and 14, 89, 90 could have easily been 39 and one, which is, they that lost, is scary. That's they lost scary two concept. games in overtime and another one by a couple of points. So you to the think they could have gone through an entire 40 game schedule and only lost once. Yeah, you don't even dream about that. I mean, like that, that. that would be like an NBA team going 78 and two. I mean, that's the, they, the, the Bulls aren't in danger of doing that, but still yeah, 70 wins. Yeah, the the NBA for an NBA team to match what the Invaders did that year, they'd have to win 72 games. It's something that's never been done in the NBA. I so. saw, I saw the New York Arrows in 19 in 1980 81 win 36 out of 40 games themselves. Just, they were just a dynamo. I mean, literally. I mean, they, they had, played more games than that, but they just played that, was four, that was a 40 games, first 40 game season they, they, they played. Yeah. So an NBA team would have to win 72 games. The NBA record is 69, held by the 72, 71, 72 Los Angeles Lakers the year they won. That year they won 33 straight games at one point. So that would be the equivalent. It would be for an NBA team to win, to, for an MISL, an MPSL team to win 36 games here. It's like an NBA team winning 72, which has never been done. So that gives you an idea what kind of accomplishment the Cleveland, Cleveland Crunch still have a chance at achieving. I mean, I, I, they could kind of throw it and cruise, but I don't, I can't see that happening. I mean, I think the, the natural instinct of Bruce Miller is to attack, 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 and let's see, once they get their, their, their jaws into something, they will, uh, they, they're going to get it. This team is, uh, I mean, they're, they're literally, I mean, they're literally a, a steamroller. Bring up any cliche you want. I, I the last two years, last, last year, the Harrisburg Heat took out the, the crunch in three straight in the playoffs, and... And the Harrisburg Heat better hope that they don't run up against these no. guys again, because I think... I think, I think the result may be a tad something. differently. I think the crunch will go out there and really try to show them that, hey, last year was a fluke. This is not going to happen again. It was an aberration. One year, it kind of, you, know, you know what this kind of reminds me of in a way? The 86-87 Edmonton Oilers, they won two straight cups. They lost on the free goal that Steve Smith inadvertently put in off of Grant Fuhrer right. against Calgary. Then they came back and won two more. And at sec that 86-87 year, they just came out like a steamroller. Wayne Gretzky, I think that was one year he would have won the scoring title just on assist. He had more assists than anybody else at total points. And that's what the crunch is. Right. The same thing they're out here saying, last year was an aberration. It's not going to happen again. I've noticed the crunch this year, too. They've got, a, I mean, like Vince Lombardi said, winning is an attitude. Exactly. And, and I think the crunch is saying, okay, here we are, deal, want to beat us, deal with it. We, we, we're one, one, we've won 24 to 26 games. You want to knock us off, come and get it. I think they're a team that is not going to be afraid of anybody challenging them, but I think, I'll be honest, I don't think anybody's going to take them. No, I, think, I, think, I think you're right. I, I think the crunch win can, it all. I think the crunch really put do. the names on the trophy now, and it's only February 2nd. I'm the third, I'm sorry. And down to 38 seconds left. I'd like to remind you, the Invaders next back in action after the All-Star break, February 23rd, a Friday night here at the Civic Center at 7.30. And then the next night, Saturday night, February 24th, 7.30 start in Baltimore as the Invaders play a home-and-home -home with the Spirit. Right now, the uh, Bill, our, our audio audio engineer genius, is putting on a song rather appropriate right now by the Traveling Wheelbikes called Rattle. And I think the, <laughs> the Invaders have gotten rattled tonight, to be brutally that honest. They have. Baltimore in a little bit of transition to Dave McWilliams, their coach was replaced by Mike Stankovich, the veteran. Mr. Bang Bang, as we called him in Baltimore, two hits. You hit him hit you, you hit the floor. Bang bang, no jog away smiling. <laughs> exactly. One of my all-time favorite, another guy, all-time favorite people in, in the in the in, in all soccer, Mike Stankovich. Well, that will do it. The Cleveland Crunch. Stop me if you've heard this one. Win again over the Canton Invaders. That 14 is straight. 14 straight. Last game of the 95-96 season. There you see the final score, 27 to four. And what else can you tell us about this? We're going to take a short break and we will be right back to wrap things up here at the Civic Center. Once again, final score there. You see it, 27 to four, the crunch all over the Canton Invaders.
Warrior will help you get back on the playing field. Call Tim Commercy Sports Medicine Center at 489-1245. Back to wrap things up at the Canton Civic Center. I'd like to remind you, Canton Invaders Soccer here on the Invaders Television Network is brought to you by Adidas the official uniform and equipment supplier to the National Professional Soccer League. Players wear Adidas. And by 1480 WHBC, your news, weather, and sports station, you catch all the Canton Invaders Sunday games live in their entirety with me on 1480 WHBC. And by Subway with 14 Canton area locations, Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. And by Cameron Coca-Cola, always the Canton Invaders, always Coca-Cola. And they bring you Powerade, the official sports drink of the 1996 Olympic Games, and your Canton Invaders. By United Bank, your locally owned and independent community bank. By Kendi, the official game ball of the National Professional Soccer League. When soccer is the game, Kendi is the name. And by the Ohio Lottery, featuring the new bingo scratch-off game. Feeling lucky today? Then play the Ohio Lottery. And by Builder Square on Whipple Avenue in North Canton. For all your home improvement needs, get hip to the square. And the final numbers, uh, unfortunately, do not look too good. No, they do not. Uh, final shots for the game. Uh, Cleveland at eight in the fourth, eight in the fourth quarter for a game total of 35. Canton had four in the fourth quarter for a game total of 23. And As I'll you may you have seen Zorn Karich on the crutches hobbling down the stairs. He's out with that sprained Achilles tendon. Hopefully he will get well soon. Won't affect the Invaders since uh, the Crunch Invaders have played their final game against each other right. this season. Fouls in the fourth quarter. Cleveland had two for game total of 10. Canton had they also had two for game total of eight. Saves. Chris Damico made three for game total of 12. And Jim Adams made four saves for game total of 15 between, it's between Jim Adams and Otto Wolf. All right, that should do it. On behalf of our entire Prism video crew and Rich Buschetti, I'm Keith Kokinda. There's the final score again. The Invaders all uh, lose again to the Cleveland Crunch, 27-4. Good night from Canton.